What's going on Exa? Welcome to my semi low budget iShot Raider currently running a 5 link iShop setup for clearing and a 5 link barrage setup for bosses. I have a chainsaw bow in my backup weapon slot that I can easily switch over to and use when I'm standing close to the enemy just like you can see in the video right now. It was a fun and easy build to play and a build that can most definitely kill Shaper and his guardians using a 5 link. The unique items that I use for this build is both a lioness bow and a chainsaw bow. As I mentioned before, against the tougher bosses in the game, I just press X and switch bows for even higher single target damage. While chainsaw is great for bosses, I use lioness for clearing as it also gives you 100% chance to hit as well as far shot. For helm, I use a starconia for the evasion, the crit chance, life, and the attack speed. And the enchantment you want on there is for barrage. For chest I went with a belly of the beast for the life and the all resistance. For gloves I used the new venomous weave gloves for the level 20 aspect of the spider skill. Aspect of the spider reduces the enemy movement speed as well as increasing the damage that they take. The debuff can stack up to 3 times on each enemy and last for 6 seconds. So during that time these gloves will increase your damage by up to 50% as well as adding 8 to 14 chaos damage per web. So for example against Shaper, 3 stacks will give you 500k more DPS with Barrage. And lastly I use a Lionized Fall Jewel which turns melee modifiers into bow modifiers. And just like you can see on the screen right now, I place that in a position to take advantage of the claw nodes inside of the jewel proximity. If you don't want to spend the currency on that jewel, then go for the deadly draw bow node just below instead. For rares, these are the stats that you're looking for. Basically you want life and resistance on all of your items and even if I usually prefer to squeeze out as much damage as possible for my rings and amulets, this time I decided to prioritize resistance since I use such few rare items. For jewels I went with only abos jewels with life and cold damage. For a flask I went with an eternal life flask with immune to bleeding. I went with a diamond flask with immune to curses with a serious promise, a wise oak, and a quicksilver flask with immune to freeze. The setup I use for clearing is ice shot and with that I have elemental damage with attacks, added cold damage, greater multiple projectiles and chain. I felt chain is very much necessary for improving the clear speed. If you have a 6 link bow then you can add ice bite as well. I made sure to use my barrage setup in my chest so whenever I switch bows mid fight it doesn't impact my damage. As I stated before I use a 5 link and with barrage I have elemental damage with attacks, elemental focus, greater multiple projectiles and added cold damage. And just like the ice shot setup if you have a 6 link then you can add ice bite. To lower the enemy cold resistance I use frost bomb and with frost bomb I use increased duration, curse on hit and projectile weakness. Instead of increased duration, you can possibly use cast from damage taken if you want. In my defensive setup, I use cast from damage taken, level 2, immortal call, level 4, summon ice golem, level 4, and then I have blink arrow in there. And lastly, I use herald of ice, ball haste, blood rage, and then I have increased duration on there. For skills, these are the progressions that I went with. I chose 3 major keystones and they are acrobatics for the dodge, vault pack for the leech and point blank for the damage. Other than that I went for life, evasion, bow and elemental damage, jewel socket and extra frenzy charges. For ascendancy I went for raider because of the higher singatory damage but you can also go with deadeye for faster clear with tailwind as well as extra chain damage. So for Raider I first picked up Way of the Poacher for the Frenzy Charges and then Avatar of the Slaughter for extra damage per Frenzy Charge. Thirdly I decided to go for Rapid Assault for the free Onslaught and then lastly Avatar of the Chase for the extra Onslaught damage and Evasion. For 
Pantheon, I ran with Soul of Lunaris for the extra avoid and dodge chance since that works very well in combination with an invade base build. For the minor one I chose Soul of Grutkult for the damage reduction and the reduced attack speed on enemies that manage to hit me. You can choose any one of these you like that suits the boss or the map mod that you're running. For bandits either help Alira or kill them all. For leveling I always recommend using a tabula rasa. I started using Aisha from level 1 and then connected with less than multiple projectiles at level 8 as well as added damage gems. I started using barrage in a 4 link at level 8 and I had less than multiple projectiles and added damage gems with that as well. For bows I started using a quill rainbow from level 5 and I used that all the way up to 32 when I switched over to a death harp and I used that from level 32 until level 66 when I could switch over to the lionized there. Other uniques I use while leveling are Lactonia Caress gloves, when black card rings, the Karu reward amulet and the darkness and throne belt. The main pros for this build is the high single target damage as well as the decent fear speed. It's a low budget build so most people can afford all of the items and a 5 link can quite easily kill Shaper. You can also put more investment into the build for even higher single target damage. The main con to this build is that you cannot run reflect mods. Evasion can be a bit random at times so sometimes you can die from high single target damage. 